All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him blessings and all his family members as well as all those who have struggled and strove through the years in a way that the deen has come to us. May Allah bless us all and may he grant us goodness. And really, may he grant us spouses who will be the coolness of our eyes. May he make us from those who can live happily ever after. I'm sure you're aware that this evening's topic is connected to marriage. And it is entitled happily ever after. Growing marriage for a lifetime. It is important for us to concentrate on the word growing because we grow. Many people don't know why they marry initially. In fact, the youth of today are bombarded by advertisements and by the media, by the television, the internet and so on, and by the glamour and glitter of the outside world that they don't even know how to choose a spouse. Mostly it is based on what someone looks like. That's a fact. And this is where the disaster occurs because many times they say, Allahu Akbar, may Allah protect us. Proof of the pudding is in eating. Allah grant us goodness. A pudding can look very great outwardly, but the minute you put it in your mouth, you realize this is not my cup of tea. May Allah protect us. Marriage is nothing like that. It is a deep institution. It is a union whereby male and female have come together by the decree of the Almighty using the name of the Almighty in a sacred union that has rights that need to be fulfilled by both parties. And the reason for marriage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear in the Quran. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly that from his signs, and this is in Surah Al-Rum, is that he has created for you, from you, for yourself, a spouse that you may achieve comfort and solace in. And you may be happy and content by this relation. Allah wants the multiplication of man on earth. And this is the reason why he has beautified in the eyes of one gender the other. Because this beautification would result in a union which would result in the deed of intimacy which would result in reproduction which would result in the increase of mankind which would result in more who worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time the plan of allah for us all would be executed this is why we get married subhanallah for the plan of allah to be executed we get married as a result and a gift Allah has made for us beautification in the opposite sex. And this is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that people begin to work towards it. If it was not beautified for us, nobody would work towards it. And this is why it is unnatural and it is abnormal to be attracted to the same sex according to Islam. The reason why I say according to Islam is the world out there begins to say it is normal and natural and it is your human right to engage in gay behavior, but not in polygamous behavior. Allahu Akbar. Look at how the mind has been blocked and knocked. And when I say blocked and knocked, what I mean is if gay behavior was allowed by the same well-educated people of the globe and the so-called free world, what is wrong with polygamous behavior? Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And don't look at me like you don't know what I'm saying. Really, so those countries that do allow behavior that is homosexual, the question I have for them is, well, what is wrong with polygamous behavior? 
or a polygamous relation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Sadly, you have women folk who have had bad experiences with their spouses and even some who perhaps are very hooked onto television and so on, who will probably say, no, it is okay to have, you know, homosexual behavior, but it is not okay to engage in polygamy. My brothers and sisters, it is not my rule. It is not your rule. It is the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it is going to be done correctly, and if it is going to be done properly, then nobody would really have any objection. The difficulty is today we choose the wrong way of engaging in polygamous relation. And this is why people are upset. It hurts people. It destroys homes because how we do it is actually wrong. And after we've done it, sometimes the way we carry ourselves is even more wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. So the introduction I chose for this evening is to make mention of why we marry. And I said it is in order to fulfill the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a gift, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has beautified the opposite sex. And this is something that we would work towards. You ask a young boy, a very young age, for your information, the age is becoming younger and younger because of the environment, because of genetically modified food, because of whatever else you would like to say. But at a younger age, they know more about marriage than sometimes those who are already married. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Just like with the gadgets of today, you find a little boy five years old will know more than his father about the iPhone. It's a fact. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Recently, I was in South Africa speaking to a group of people and I told them from the age of eight and ten, you need to start speaking to your boys and girls about marriage. And a lot of them agreed with me. I think because they know that from that age, they already have their girlfriends and boyfriends. And they are already setting their minds and eyes on people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us goodness. And may he open our doors. Remember, as parents, it is a duty to communicate with your own children. Don't be shy. If you are not going to tell them what marriage is all about, what intimacy is all about, they will learn it from someone who will teach them the wrong thing. Perhaps they will learn it from a colleague at school or perhaps a teacher who is homosexual himself or herself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. It's a fact. It is happening on the globe and we are suffering as a result. So I call on parents to communicate with their children openly and to discuss with respect that which needs to be discussed. You are responsible. You are the one who will build the mind of your child as to how to look for a spouse. But if you've never ever spoken to your child about looking for a spouse, what type of a spouse do you expect them to look for? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. By right, we should be living in a world where we help them looking for the spouse. But me and I, meaning yourself and myself, we know very clearly that today that does not happen. In a lot of cases and instances, it does not happen. They come to you and impose on you their choice. And that's it. So it is best for you to help them make their choice by speaking about it whilst they are still quite young. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good bond with our own children. And may he make us from those who are not affected by the adverse environment or who can protect ourselves from it in order to be uh, achieving the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, we ask the Almighty to open our doors. In our midst, there are people who are married. There are those who are not married. There is no third probability. From amongst those who are married, there are some who may have more than one spouse. We will talk about that as well by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from amongst us who are married, there are some who do not have offspring. May Allah grant you offspring. There are some who have offspring. We've already touched on how important communication is with your offspring. But from amongst us, there are those who are not married yet. Or those who have been married and lost their spouses either due to divorce or death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open your doors once again. And for those whose doors have not been opened yet, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open those doors of yours and grant you spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes. It is important for us to know that the choice of person whom we marry is extremely important. This is why Allah says in the verse that I read moments ago, Allah says, indeed, in that there is a sign or there are signs for those who ponder. You need to ponder. You need to think 
What is marriage all about? Wallahi, if you look at the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, people marry for several reasons. People marry, one narration says, for four reasons. Someone marries because of the wealth of a woman. You know, it is ironic. I've learned about the culture in this part of the world. It's quite different from the culture elsewhere as well. The cultures differ. I believe here a female does a lot in terms of financial contribution compared to other parts of the world. My brothers and sisters, sometimes there are some men who become wealthy because of marrying a wealthy woman. And after that, they make their wealth through the woman and then they want to harm the same woman whom they made their wealth through and they became rich via. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. That is unfair. That is very unfair. We need to know a woman may be married for her wealth, but that wealth may deplete. So it is something that is very short lived. A woman may be married for her looks, but that looks, those looks of hers will somehow Subhanallah, I'd like to word this very carefully, would somehow change. And you find the trends of the world also changing as to what is good. Subhanallah, good looks. There was a time when people who had a gap between their front teeth being considered as gorgeous. So everyone used to go and get a gap in their, you know, between the front teeth. And then there came a time when no, you need straight proper teeth. So now everyone wants proper teeth. Then there is a time when, you know, people have a nose ring, they look good. So everyone has nose ring. Now there is a time when person with nose ring, no one wants to look at them. Subhanallah. So what is considered beautiful and good today may not be considered beautiful and good tomorrow in terms of beauty. And even if it is the person whom you married for the beauty that you perceived within the physical features of that particular person, those features may disappear either in stages or instantly. So that is also short lived. That is the second point. The third one, a female may be married because of her lineage or her status, very high status, very lofty lineage, very top family. You know, that can be lost within a split second. The status can drop because of one deed, something that they have done comes crashing. Something that a member of the family has done comes crashing. So that is also short lived. It is something that can go. But if a person is married for their deen and their deen here referring to religion as well as character and conduct, both of them together make up what is known as deen. Deen is not just your spiritual department without character because the spirituality cannot be developed truly without character and conduct. So the two come hand in hand. So if you would like to know how religious a person really is, you need to study their character and behavior. It's very important. Sometimes you have a man who is very, very pious in terms of salah, in terms of big beard, in terms of his studies, what he has studied. And you find he may be fulfilling his prayers in the masjid, but he's, he has a very bad mouth. He lies. He swears. He deceives. He speaks very rough to people. Stay away from that man. He's not pious. It is just an outward show that is being shown to people. May Allah protect us. This is why the hadith says, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيضٌ If a person comes to you and two things are good in that person, allow them to marry your daughter. If you don't allow them to marry your daughter, yet they have these two things in them, in that particular case, there will be great chaos and corruption on the earth. This is what the hadith says. So today people, a man comes to marry the daughter. They say, brother, where is your salary slip for the last four months? And I want to see your bank balance. And let me see the type of phone you are using. The scent you are smelling is from India. I need something from France. Allahu Akbar. But brother, are you going to marry the man or your daughter? That's a question. And some of the scents from India are far better than the scents from France. Because in France, all they do is they buy it from India, they give it a good name, they put it in a better bottle and they resell it to the same Indians. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may He open our doors. It's a matter of intellect. My brothers and sisters, so if those are the first questions we are asking the man we are losing, you look at his character. Does he read salah? Does he fulfill salah? What type of behavior? How does he speak to me? How does he come across? Is he a person who is full of arrogance or he might be a bit shy? Remember, sometimes people might say this man doesn't know how to talk properly. What does that mean? Is it that he is arrogant? Is it that he is showing you negative qualities through his speech? Or 
Is it that he is shy and he is not speaking much? That is, there is a difference between the two. Sometimes you have a young man who is not used to speaking to women and he's not used to being interrogated because of marriage. So when you ask him a question or two, he might not be able to be so eloquent and he might not be able to impress you with his speech because perhaps he is not used to it. For as long as he was not arrogant and he was not a bad man. And you can find out from others around in the locality, those whom he mixes with. Brother, which masjid do you go to? Go and speak to the imam in that masjid. Do you see this man in the masjid? Subhanallah. If that is the criteria, then we can live happily ever after. But if your criteria was the scent and the salary, tomorrow he can become jobless because of retrenching. And then he will also be wifeless after becoming wireless. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. It's difficult. We are in an age where everything is less. You know, someone had sent me a beautiful SMS. It's a pity I don't have it with me right now about how we have become, you know, smokeless in, in terms of, you know, the, the, the lighters and what have you. And we have become wireless and we have become thisless and homeless and everything is actually becoming less and less and less. And even people are becoming clothless. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness really we are living in an age where if you are attracted to someone because of her legs remember if that is why you married her and she still has the exposition of those legs two things may happen one is there will come a time when a gash or a mark may develop on those legs so now you go for better legs astaghfirullah astaghfirullah or there may be someone who likes the same legs who has credentials better than yours so he steals her from you that can happen May Allah protect us. So remember, if you have gone for the deen, as I said, the hadith says two qualities. When they get to you and the man has asked you for your daughter, do not refuse unnecessarily. No, I had a problem with this man's grandfather. You know, one day he came to my shop and he did not pay me on time. So I'm not giving you. Allah, what foolish behavior is that? This is the opportunity to resolve the matter. Allahu Akbar. As it is, you will be paying a mahar. You will be paying a price. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May he make us from those whom when the dowry is to be paid, we have a simple straightforward amount and we do not make it difficult for our boys and girls. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to make mention of the statement of the age. What is it? Bear it in mind, remember it, memorize it, understand it and put it into practice. The more difficult we make marriage, the easier we have made adultery. Remember that. We are guilty of making adultery easy and facilitating it for our boys and girls. If we make their marriage difficult, do not think that they should just remain doomed until the end of life just because you are stubborn as a father or mother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, really. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So much so that we would like our children to marry certain types of people because that is our dream. We want a good man who will look after our daughter or a good wife who will look after our son. Remember, it may be our dream, but my brothers and sisters, do not forget, you have to adjust your dreams that you have for your children as time passes because the deeds of those children will reword that particular dream or it will actually go back and rewrite that particular dream. Sometimes you want your child to be a hafiz, memorize the Quran, to study the deen, but the child is not inclined in that direction. You need to adjust your dream. Sometimes you want a beautiful life for your daughter, but she might come back divorced. You need to adjust your dream. Sometimes you might want something beautiful for your child, but he does not want that particular girl. He wants to marry someone who is ready to revert. Allahu Akbar. Listen to this. My brothers and sisters, I will open it bare in front of you. We have a crisis. What is the crisis? Yes, we look for someone who is Muslim. We look for someone who is good. We look for someone, mashallah, who has, you know, some form of deen in them. But believe me, today we have a problem. I was faced with a young man who came to me and he told me his whole story. So I met his father and his father told me, and these people are in a first world country. And his father told me, look, I will never, ever accept what my son wants. Impossible. I said, but why? He said, you know, she is a Christian. I said, she is prepared to revert, not for the marriage, but for purposes of the deen itself. 
And sometimes we have seen people who revert for purposes of marriage, but Allah gives them so much hidayah that they become better than born Muslims. I have seen it with my own eyes, with my own eyes. So I told him, brother, can I really speak to your heart? Will you open your heart to listen to what I have to say today? He says, no, I respect you a lot. When he said that, I seized the opportunity. I told him, if you respect me a lot, would you mind if I helped you make the decision? He was quiet because obviously he doesn't know what I'm about to say, but it's difficult because he is stubborn on one end. I told him, brother, he agreed after a while. He said, okay, inshallah, whatever you say, we will get it done. I said, brother, I have traveled a lot of countries. I have seen many people and I have seen men who have married men and women who have married women. And I have seen people who claim to be following Islam, who also have engaged in that type of so-called nikah. And I've seen so-called Imams who have engaged in fulfilling or officiating so-called nikahs of so-called people of same sex. May Allah protect us. I said, brother, thank Allah that he wants to marry a woman, not a man. He looked at me and said, what do you mean? I showed him three people in his own city. I said, do you know these people are lost because they have gone out, abandoned their families in order to get married to a person of the same sex. He was shocked. He said, no, you have opened my eyes. I said, we do not promote that we leave our Muslim girls and go out further. No. But if it does happen that a man wants to marry a woman, thank Allah, we are living in a hostile environment. Wallahi, people are engaged in homosexuality to the degree that Islam would be disgraced as a result. You know, people sometimes in the first world country, they do not allow you to speak openly about gays and lesbians in a negative way. They don't allow you. In fact, you may be even blacklisted if you do that. So we have to be very careful how we word it because as Muslims, we do not allow it upon ourselves. Let's get that clear. We chose to be Muslims. If someone is living, for example, in Britain, they have a choice to be Muslim or not to be Muslim, according to the British law. And they have a choice to choose. They have a choice what they want. So if they have chosen to be Muslim, what does it mean? It means through the freedom of the British law, they have imposed on themselves a set of rules and regulations within the rules and regulations of the British law, which now makes them known as a Muslim, which means they have chosen not to engage in gay activity and not to allow it for themselves. So that is through your freedom, you did not allow upon yourself to drink alcohol. So the same way through your freedom, you did not allow upon yourself to engage in this type of behavior. So one day I had a man who came to me and he said, no, 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 that's still a statement which is unfair. I said, okay, let me explain to you. You're a British man. He said, yes. If a man wants to be British and a citizen of Britain, would it be correct for him to say, I disagree with the laws of Britain, but I want to remain a citizen. I disagree with the citizenship laws, but I am going to be a citizen. It is not correct. He said, no, he will be stripped of his citizenship or he will not be granted it in the first place. I said, well, if a man wants to, through his freedom, say he's a Muslim, then he cannot say I'm a Muslim, but I disagree with Islamic rules. That means you are free to say I am not a Muslim. I'm someone else. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. So the point I'm raising my brothers and sisters is sometimes you will have to adjust your dream regarding the type of person that you want your child to marry. It is their choice. You can guide them. You will try with them. But believe me, you have to somehow give in at some stage. If it is a person whom you may not have considered ideal, because sometimes the other option is something which is even worse than what you are disagreeing with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I know of many parents who refuse their daughters to get married to people they want to marry foolishly. Allow your daughter to make the mistake and to come back divorced being your daughter so happy with you and you will be able to guide her with love. My daughter, didn't I tell you anyway? Now you made the mistake. You have come home. We still love you. We embrace you and we still recognize you as our daughter. But it would have been better if you did not make the mistake. She will say, Dad, I love you forever for standing by me and for looking after me instead of saying never ever. And she becomes a person who, who is an eyesore for you she becomes depressed because today people become depressed when they cannot marry whom they want to marry 
And it's our fault. We sent them to the schools. We sent them to the various mixed type of educations. We did this. We did that. We had a place in the mall where we were every week. We did not dress them appropriately when they were young. So as they grew up, they did not want the appropriate dress. We are the ones who, who placed them in front of the televisions and we subscribe to the dirtiest of the internet channels or satellite channels and so on. And then we expect our daughters to still have a good Islamic choice of a spouse. Who is the hypocrite? Father of the home. Big hypocrite. May Allah protect us. Why? Where are you? What did you allow your daughter to do all along? And now you want to come in and say, no, I allowed you to become a mango, for example. But, but now, for example, I want you to be a banana. Astaghfirullah. Allahu Akbar. I'm giving you an example of fruit because just before I entered here, we had a bit of fruit. May Allah grant us goodness. The fruit of Sri Lanka. Mashallah. So my brothers and sisters, it's not fair. Do you know that when a child is born, Allah gives you almost 100% control over that child. You dress the child, you name the child, you decide when to bath the child, what the child will eat. All control. Don't say I don't have control over my child. Allah said I gave you full control when the child was born. That's the time you did not dress the child properly. You never read your own salah. You, there was no Quran ever played. There was nothing. And slowly, slowly as the child grows up one by one, Allah takes away the control of elements from you regarding that particular child. So when a child is a little baby, you can give the child a rattle, a rattle worth one rupee and it will shake the rattle and smile and laugh with you. Let the child become five years old. Give them the rattle. They will throw it back at your face. Dad, are you playing a fool with me? I need an iPhone. So at a certain stage, you had control over the child. What did you do when you had control over your child? Did you guide the child? This is why I say speak to the child earlier because today we are losing control earlier. You can dress your child how you want when the child is two years, three years, even if the clothing is torn. Let the child get to eight years, nine years. Dad, I'm not wearing these shoes. Why? You make me look like one of those people living in the 1960s. Dad, I need the latest, you know, this Nike Air where you, you walk, it bounces, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, grant us goodness and ease. My brothers and sisters, don't blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our failure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. So this is why I say, sometimes we need to adjust. The reason is, how can we allow or how can we faci facilitate for our children to live happily ever after when we did not let them marry the person they wanted. We made them marry someone they did not want. Now, obviously, I'm talking of something which is not the ideal. Ideally, ideally, Islamically, we need to speak about what should be happening. The parents of the girls and the brothers or the relatives should keep an eye when they see potential husbands for their daughters or their sisters and so on. They should approach the gentleman or his family or they should speak to their daughter about it we have so and so we are trying to you identify you speak to them you let the two meet within the limits of the sharia and if they would like to take it further you take it further it's your responsibility as a male that is ideal and if this daughter says no i'm not too happy don't be angry no pressure my sister you have the right it is haram in islam to force your daughter to marry whom you want when she does not want totally forbidden. It is a major sin. In fact, you cannot do that. It is her choice. She can say no. At the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also, there were those who said, no, I don't want to marry this man. And they were not forced to it. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us goodness. The only time we can force someone is revel if revelation has been revealed to say these two must be married, then we have no choice. But revelation will not be revealed in the case of us. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us goodness. So, in that particular case, maybe she doesn't want to marry the first, the second, the third. You have introduced her to five or ten with respect. And when I say with respect, you can find out from the scholars exactly how that should happen. What type of arrangement? You don't just say, okay, pick up my daughter at nine o'clock and bring her back at twelve o'clock. That's not how you meet in Islam. It must be in your presence in the sense that you are close at hand. The reason is shaitan comes to the boys or the girls sometimes and makes them abuse one another in a way that wallahi they are left like used toilet paper without any form of respect and then they say no i don't want to marry you may allah grant us goodness may allah grant us really the opening and may he open our doors so someone says but why can't i get to know him more you can 
you can get to know him much more you can meet five times you can meet more than five times but the rules of meeting are still the same you will meet with your chaperone with your mahram you will meet with them close at hand come to your house or we got come to yours one of the two either i come to yours you come to mine and we meet with total transparency in in the or within reach of your mahram who is right there may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness so no one can fool you and you talk you understand how you are communicating and you may say no you know this is not uh, really my cup of tea and with respect you can turn that down turn the next one down the third one down no problem until the 35th one comes you might want to say yes allahu akbar i'm just giving you a scenario that can happen it has happened sometimes one or two people agree sometimes they don't agree don't worry but remember when you have turned one down you may not get another one remember that and when you have turned one down you may not get another one as good as the one you have turned down so you